live. Let me just see if I can. music until. Can I get closer? Well, I. <laughs> come on, come on. Can you come up? All right, here you go. There. There we go. Is there any songs you want to hear? Uh, <laughs> I can't think of any at the moment. Well, play the Rainbow Connection. I don't remember that it goes. We're doing another live stream today because my mom is leaving tomorrow. Hang on, is this even going yet? Oh, it's going, sweet. I usually don't do a Sunday Sunday live stream because it's a day of rest. But when my mom's around, you gotta you gotta <laughs> lock her in. You gotta tell the stories. You gotta keep the keep the the dream alive. There you go. There we go. So last night I I wrote to Patreon. By the way, here's a link if anybody wants to, to join. Patreon.com slash WDTL. And uh, thank you all, by the way, for subscribing to my website. Hugepianist.com slash subscribe. A bunch of those came in in the last two days and it was awesome. And I, I felt very uh, grateful to you all. And uh, Patreon's still rocking and rolling. They've threatened to kick me off, but they've really quieted, <laughs> quieted down. And... Um, all right, so what did I, I asked the Patreons what to ask my mom, and this is what we got so far. Is that a nice picture oh, of us? Oh, yes. Hang on, let me, uh, <laughs> let me show them this. This is a picture of my mom and me and Walter yesterday that Amy took. Was that a nice breakfast? Or what was it? No, dinner. It was a dinner. dinner. <laughs> My mom treated us yesterday. We've been to, uh, we've been letting her treat us to a lot of these <laughs> meals. Look at that. Look at those two. She's she's a little over six feet tall. That's no, why. Well, now I'm about a half an inch under. You're half inch under six yes, feet. Yes, that's what uh, they measured me at. Dr. You, you Rob's shrank. I, well, I don't. You know, maybe it was the time of day. How about? <laughs> How long I was did you never go? Never over six feet. How long did you go without going to the hosp uh, hospital? Oh gosh, it's <laughs> years. A, it's a hilarious stat. I, uh, well, I wish I could remember. I, twenty years. Twenty years. <laughs> oh, Haven, great oh, dude. Going oh, to by the, the way, this guy. Yeah. Not since you were born, and then I had the AFib incident. So you didn't go for thirty-seven years. Right. She didn't go to the hospital for 37 years. I had to, I'm trying to remember the last time I went to it. Oh, the last time I went to the doctor was six years. How, I, o how often in your life have you taken antibiotics? Oh, gosh, Jason. I'm My not name's good Owen. at this. My oh, name's Owen. Owen. <laughs> <laughs> you may need to start going to the doctor. <laughs> that, that picture right there, is it the one up there drawn? Yes. This guy drew that. Oh, so which, his question is, oh, you have 60 <laughs> seconds to give advice to a 19 year old girl. What do you say? Same for 19 year old boy. What advice do you give a 19, 19 year old 19 year old girl? Oh, it's going to be so cliche, but I, just stay true to who you think you are. I, I spent a lot of years in isolation because I knew for some reason I knew who I was early on. And I was not part of what society was trying to tell me who I was. When I, now this is going to take more than sixty. No, seconds. No, this is the, that's the point. That's why I want <laughs> our questions beforehand so that you can really go for it. Um, when I, I came from a very small town in southwestern Wisconsin, Benton, I had twenty-four. There were twenty-four of us in our high school graduating class, twelve girls and twelve boys. By the end of the first year that we were out. 11 of those girls had babies. Guess who was the one who didn't? <laughs> and so that's, uh, but I got used to being odd. And that was one of the, um, oh, what's the word? Well, examples, but of, of, there I was, the only one who didn't have a baby at 19. The boys, well, 
I'm trying to think. None of them were the father of those babies. Hey, buddy. Uh, were the they girl, all married, though? Uh, are you kidding? They no. weren't married. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I, you know the most. The, maybe two were. One of the biggest predictors of future. The the three biggest things. Larry Elder was saying this that if you don't want to be poor in America. I'll wait till you're married to have children and finish high school, and the odds that you'll be poor are like under 5%. That those are the factors. Oh. And boys? She wanted to know about the boys? Oh, no, he wanted to know. Boy, yeah. What, do you, what advice do you give well, me imagine you're a boy? Well, the same thing. You, you're going to, well, you know, especially my brother, I watched him get into all kinds of trouble. Um, and you and Jason, you know, uh, weren't exactly uh, sitting home. Anyway, um, you've got to have a sense of what your core is. You've just got to, or else you're going to be pulled out into the tornado. Yeah, that's how you don't get pulled everywhere. That, that, but you're going to be alone, a... and you're going to feel isolated. Oh, where's my where's my uh, diary? Oh, what happened to the box? I'm not sure. It's in the box. Amy had to put it away because of. of do do you want to grab it? Well, yeah. Okay. Come back because it, it fits. You want to <laughs> hear words right from my mouth? It's uh, my mom brought a bunch of uh, and and I'll do. I'm gonna do another live stream tomorrow because I have a lot to talk about with the with the Jordan Peterson debate. I don't know if you guys watched that with Michael Eric Dyson and a bunch of these people. They debated um. Political correctness, and it was horrifying. Like, like the stuff that the 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 race baiting from Michael Dyson was unbelievable. He called uh, he called uh, uh, Jordan Peterson a, an angry white man. Like they couldn't even talk. Like they literally couldn't even they couldn't even get through any questions. It, it made me so mad that I. I commented on the video, if you're on the left, you're either an idiot or, or, or evil. And, um, and people were like writing to me like, oh, you're, you're the reason that the left acts this way. I'm like, no, I'm not. Defending, defending a rape, it doesn't make you as bad as the rapist. And I, I stand behind that. I think if you're a leftist at this point, you're either an idiot or evil. I don't think that you can possibly justify it. And I was going to make a video just why the left is evil. And it, and you can't argue against it. I haven't seen one argument against it. All they can say is you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe. They, they, all they can do is attack character. They can't justify okay, I found forced... Oh. oh, cool. I'm just ranting a little bit. Oh, okay. So this is what I wrote in my diary when I was 14. It's crazy how little things change. Is it right on top? I think it's right on Wasn't it right on top? I don't know. It doesn't matter. What's, Here we go. Come on. I am 14 years old now, and I am upstairs listening to Final Cut by Pink Floyd. I got in a big fight with my mother today. It was terrible, <laughs> but I'm glad it happened because now I realized I was becoming too involved with money, and I was so inconsiderate to my mom. I had momentarily lost sight of my goals in life. I like to keep my life simple. I don't like the idea of putting money above people. It gives me a bad feeling inside. I've learned to appreciate being alone. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. It is because I didn't realize you had picked up on those those little insights. Okay, we got a couple team. super chats here. Armenian Bear here. Hi, Mama Bear. Thank you. Oh uh, this is a hey big bear. Can I be verified as Mellow Bear here in Australia watching with my wife? Hope oh. to see you soon, buddy. Can't wait for the book. I think I'm coming to Australia with um, Gavin McGinnis and Tommy Robinson at some point in the fall. Oh my. Yeah. I've been there. I was on the island of Tasmania for close to a month when I had a friend um, asking me to be on her dissertation committee. So I, I w was and I went. It was great. I got one. All right. So, so this is from Sean. So I'm starting my PhD in bio in fall at Notre Dame. I haven't really outed myself as a conservative to many people. However, my time at Johns Hopkins and now working for Starbucks wow. has gotten me to the point where I feel like I have to start standing up for my b views. At Johns Hopkins, I was called a corn-fed Western white boy okay. and, and things such as, hey, you ever seen 
Get out. Um, you don't know what that is. It's fine. We're said to just, you don't know that, right? Just trust me on this one. We're said to me at my job at Hopkins. So my supervisor and other coworkers, so you can see my concern. I've heard many discussions, the issue of being an active conservative on campus, but would love to know your mom's thoughts. Also, does she think I should attend the Starbucks implicit bias meeting or not? That's right. They have told me that it's mandatory, but again, I want to start standing up for what I believe. Mother, take it away. Well, you're carrying quite a load. I wonder where you're from in the Midwest. Doesn't matter, I guess. But um, uh, I've heard about what Starbucks is going to do, and I I don't watch the news. It's horrifying. Yeah, I know. But I heard I heard a debate about that. It, it, and now, just a minute. And the consensus is it's not going to do any good. Of course not. You can't take somebody for three hours and change them over when they don't even know what they're being changed over. It's even from. worse than that. The whole point is to get people to say they're they're racist when they're not. Well, and wasn't one of the problems too, those those two black men who were sitting in Starbucks, weren't they concerned that they just came in to sat, they didn't buy anything, they of didn't even know coffee? Of course. It's all it's <laughs> like of course you should call the cops on them. Because when you know, when we have to stop along the way from us, we go to uh, Saranac Lake, we stop, walk the dogs, use the bathroom. And if I use the bathroom at a nice and easy or a place like that, I'll buy a pint of half and half. I, those guys didn't even, they didn't even order coffee to sit there and take up space of an of other people who well, might now want black, to come in. And, now and, black people are going in and saying, uh, you're racist if you don't give me free coffee and people are giving them free coffee. Oh, and like, this is getting too out of hand. This is too oh, crazy. No, we're we're just gonna we're I gonna know, watch something I know together your problems, right now. But oh, mom, is, it's it's worse than you can imagine. See, I'll boycott your smug little face. There and it is. and it's coming so fast. <sighs> like, think about how many things I've been right about over the years. Yes. Okay. It's getting. Yeah. All right. How great was it yesterday though at breakfast when someone just came over and was yes. like, "It wasn't that it didn't yes. make you feel good." That uh, this this man uh, from from town came over and said, "I want to shake your hand, Owen. You have been doing great things. I want you to keep it up." And he, well, he was, said, "Keep fighting the good keep fight." Keep fighting the good and, fight. And it's good that my mom sees that stuff because we're just out of breakfast. Then, because like uh, she worries about me sometimes, but uh, it, it's 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 getting great. And and like what you're saying about Karen, like uh, how you Karen. hear like you hear from friends that yes. they like my comedy now. Yes. So yes. my advice to to Sean. Is uh, and then my mom will finish her advice. But you, you guys, you've got to believe me on this. I know sometimes you guys are like, "Oh, you, you cut off your mom." Sometimes she's about to go into the history of Wisconsin. Like she'll be like, "I wonder where he's from," because I'm from Benton. Is it Dubuque? Is it is it Galena? Because Galena means lead. You know why that is? Because they used to. I'm telling you, I know and love my mom as much as you can know and love a human being. So when I do that, it's for a purpose. It's not because I don't want to hear what she has to say. I like to keep her on track. And she's not rambly. She's just on a different timeline. It's not like she's missing her points. She just is like, okay, well, before we answer Sean's question about Johns Hopkins, we need to know the history of Galena, Illinois. So I would, this is the thing. You have to start standing up for what you believe or else they'll own you for life. They'll own you for life. You, there is no, if only I get through this, this obstacle, right, right. I, I will then be okay. You have right. to, you have to, every moment of every day is a trial. Are you going to do what is the right thing or the wrong thing? Are you going to do what you are or what you pretend to be? And every time you don't pick the right one, every time you fake it, it takes a little about of what you really are because your, your, your body and your mind and your soul doesn't understand the difference between, um, being fake b between lies and reality. I I'm convinced of this. Where if you pretend yeah. to be something long enough, you either become that yes. or you oh, die. Uh, they became what they beheld is a, a, a picture book I have at home. They became what they beheld. Yes. And also, but you don't have to be loud about it. You don't no, have to say, no. I'm a conservative. Everybody should be a conservative. That actually goes, that actually hurts. It does. You can just, or... You can just say, well, no, if you don't want to attend, you can just say, no, thank you. I, I'd rather, oh, they're going to shut I'd, down all of Starbucks, though, I, aren't they? I'd rather not. That's what John Taylor Gatto said. 
Just say stuff like I'd rather yes. not. Yes, and and just say and I'd make them not. And make them be the bad guy. Yes, just say I'd rather not, and they go, well, you have to be like I'd rather not, because then they they either have to be polite or they have to reveal their hand. And if it does come down to whether they'll say you go or you lose your job, then you have to make that decision. What are you going to say? Okay, I'll go. I don't want to lose my job. I want to get my degree. Or are you going to say? No, I cannot do that. And bear in mind, people will call you a racist. It might be written up in a newspaper. That, but, but understand that that will also inspire people. Because when Owen was, was maligned in Pittsburgh by, by somebody who wrote an article in the Pittsburgh Gazette, the paper that goes all over Pittsburgh, that said he's this alt-right racist and he got into the library and we've got to take down the library now because they can't do this to racists. And so you can imagine what happened to him then if you've been following him. Well, that that editor was fired. So Owen was right. But as I think you said, it'd be nice if they put it in the paper. That but you'll never get would, that. But you'll never get that. No, but, and this is the thing that... That's... But the editor was fired who did that to him. Well, he suffered for all those months, but now he is right. Yeah, and, and, and you won't get fame... And you right. like you won't get the good fame and you won't get the good prestige, but you have to let that go because you can't have both. And if you think too that it, you might lose your job over it if they make it mandatory, then maybe you can uh, already start thinking in your head, okay, where else can I find a job if they're going to kick me out? Um, so you've got to make a decision. Are you going to say yes or no? I'd rather not, whatever. And if they force you, then that's where you're going to have to decide. And I, well, Owen keeps saying that he learned from me about making these decisions. Um, but in a sense, I didn't even realize I was making those decisions all along. And it wasn't about racism at the time. That was not an issue. It was about, here I was, the only single girl in my class either n not with a baby or not married or not with a boyfriend. And I went on to college, really, Jean. But I knew, I just knew there was something else that I had to do in life. So And someone else said, just, just go alt-right already at this point. Why the F not? And look, I want to I wanna, uh, answer that. I think the alt-right is more justified than the left, and I still find it wrong because it's still identity politics. And any identity politics yeah. to me is wrong. Yes. Because, I okay, the left has made it so the white, the, so white people almost have to start talking like them in order to compete yes. against them. Where it's like, yes. okay, well, as a black woman, left-handed from, you know, Turkestan, I have a right to an opinion because you haven't lived. I got in a fight with a dude recently. Uh, we're all hanging and drinking, and uh, I, we got in this massive argument. We ended up closer for it. It's all good. But but uh, their, their argument against, well, I was talking about how Democrat-run cities keep black people extremely poor on purpose. And he was like, well, you don't know these neighborhoods. Like, you don't know what it's like to be a black man. I'm like, the whole point of talking and thinking is you don't have to be everything. You don't know what it's like, like to be a beaker full of full of hydrogen gas that doesn't stop you from making balloons like you can think and it's like so if the whole identity thing gets like keeps going 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 eventually you get to the point where white people have to play ball and say well we're white so that makes us special because we're, and, yes. and that's still to me that will always be wrong because then you win a battle where you lose your soul yes yes yeah because i'm thinking what came into my head is uh, philosophy and in philosophy, there's something called the accident and the essence. And, you know, the essence is the soul. The accident is what's on the outside. Well, for example, I am about six feet tall. Do you know how many women I have seen who are six feet tall? <laughs> Maybe five. No, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. But um, I, so I'm not, I don't identify as a six feet tall, six foot tall woman, but that's the way others identify me. It, and it's not about the color of my skin. It's about the way I look. And because I went to school, I was six feet tall. And I think the next uh, tallest girl in my class was five, five. They were all these short people. But I didn't, I, I, that didn't bother me because what I knew I had to be after was the essence of who I, I was. I identify just as being tall. 
It makes me better than the small people. <laughs> well, Owen, you're not a woman, so how do you know what it's exactly. like to be a woman? Well, you weren't born done. in Ben, Wisconsin. I'm from Galena, Illinois, so you don't know what it's like <laughs> yes. to have the pressures. And the, that is a way they to will isolate. They going and going. It's an, and you essence, have to, you, essence and accident. You have to stand up to that or they will never stop. Because right. then if you're black, they'll say, well, you don't know what it's like to, to, to have lighter skin in a black community. You don't know what it's right. like to have a dad who was home or wasn't home. Or you don't know what it, right. like, yes, you do. And you can't let them do that. Because what it does, is it, it isolates the, the ideas. Because it, if you know you can't win a debate because your ideas are wrong, all you can do is attack the person and the highest yep. level of attacking the person, just like Foucault and all these people uh, show you, is... is is a uh, uh, power. It's just power and power. They're using white Western um, Judeo-Christian values against us, which is be polite, be respectful of someone else's experience, be like don't uh, confront people for no reason, and th and that's the way to whittle down um, a society. You say, well. Well, you weren't there. It's like this David Hogg thing. It's like, well, he was a victim of a shooting. It's like, because we're, we're all victims of 9-11. Like, like, I've been shot in the face. Like, it's like, so, yeah, so what does right. that mean? <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's look at a little Jordan Peterson. It's like, just because someone has experienced something that you necessarily haven't experienced doesn't mean they can say crazy stuff without being questioned. Because, because you the one going to Johns Hopkins, uh, your essence is you're a human being and talking to other human beings. And so the, all this isolation and Oh, it's anti-white, anti-men. It, it, yeah. uh, it is really too crazy. Too yeah, crazy. when they say diversity, they never mean more white conservative males. You'll ne never once ever. And we'll talk about the corruption at colleges, too, after this. But let's just look at a little yeah, of this. Yeah. Okay. Empirical, as far as I know, the word means that which can be verified or falsified through the senses. Exactly. So if we look at it in an objective yeah. um, a way, uh, the, the reality is that people don't have equal access to the means to articulate no. the very moment you're talking no, about. I'm talking That's about the one. empirical results of the, this political attitude. I understand that, but my point is simply this. So this guy is a race baiter, like an Al Sharpton race baiter. He, nothing he says makes any sense. Right. And Jordan I, Peterson I, I, keeps calling him out on it with that with that Canadian version yeah. of Midwest attitude. <laughs> where he's like Outdoor cats. Yeah, outdoor cats. <laughs> and and the racism from this 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 guy is just and Stephen Fry is great. All right, so what's uh, Peterson saying here? Propose I do about it. How about? Oh, how this about this is tax? heated. This is heated. This is amazing. Okay, so I want to bring beauty to that flag. Have been denied. This guy's horrible. So we have to really set the terms of debate in order before we we, we proceed. Thank you, man. Good point. Jordan, let's have you jump in on this idea of, of what you see as the pernicious danger of groupthink when it comes to ethnicity, uh, when it comes to gender. Why do you think well, that that's one of the primal sins, in your view, of, of quote, political correctness? Well, I think it's one of the primal sins of identity politics players on the left and the right, just to be clear about that. See, this that is the one personally. thing that I don't agree with Peterson about in this whole talk, is he keeps equating the like Nazis to extreme right. And they're not. They're national socialists. Groupthink is left. And that oh. trick, when people fall for that trick and then engage in that trick, that's what does a lot of problems. When they're like, oh, yeah, well, I've seen extreme identity politics on the right. The alt-right is leftism. When it's like, I am defined by being a white male, not my thoughts, my, yeah. my merit. My, like the Founding Fathers, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments, the, <laughs> the New Testament, like these things aren't. Uh, as, as they're not have nothing to do with with uh, your race or gender. It literally is: Are you a good or a bad person? Right. Uh, do you have merit? Right. And so I, that, despite the good things that he does in this, I really was disappointed when he said, because when uh, Dyson said, "Is the right gone too far?" and he said, "Yeah, like Charlottesville." It's like that isn't the right. That's those are the right wing is not about racism or sexism. It isn't. Conservatism in America is about, yeah, it's about making money and being and doing what's like the, it's about establishing your values early and not just changing it nonstop. Like the, the, the constitution is a non-racist document. It literally says all men are created equal 
and they, and they dealt with the slavery issue and they knew it was going to be an issue and they're the first people in human history to ban slavery. So we can all pump the brakes. All right, so let's watch this. Since this has got personal at times, I'm no fan of the identitarian right. I think that anybody who plays a game, a, a conceptual game where... Real quick, someone says, no, he's not. He's equating ethnostate, which is right wing. It's not right wing. Okay, conservatism is what the founding fathers set up. There's nothing ethnostate about it. Ethnostate is not right wing. It's, it's just not. You guys can think it is all you want. It isn't. Like to say... Mm -hmm. You like Thomas Sowell, Larry Elder, those black men that are conservatives, they don't want an ethno state. And that like the like bowling alone in some of these books that I respect, it's not about the the race, it's about the culture, the values, and right. It it just right. isn't. If, if if you think it is, you're not it literally isn't about race, like right wing The people who want to start wars say it's about race. Right. And if you engage in that, if you say right wing is white people and left wing is, is all non-white people, you're starting. Oh, oh someone just said you're wrong. Well, well, tell me oh, where I'm. No, yeah. but tell me where yes. I am. Ethno state equals collectivism, which is left wing. Exactly, Manster Bear. It is. The watcher, you're wrong. Well, well then you, say something else. You exactly. Just say you're well, wrong. Welcome to the Internet. That's called all they <laughs> oh, do. Is he a well, troll? Who knows? Oh, but that, that's the thing is when, when someone says you're wrong without saying anything else, they've yeah. already lost. Um, nothing is about one thing. Can't ignore race. Um, you, you, but philosophically, you can't do that. When you say, okay, I naturally gravitate more towards white people. That's a fact. That isn't due to racism. It's just due to just like I, I gravitate to tall people and short people sometimes. Sometimes middle-sized people freak me out. It literally doesn't have to do with race. Well, tell that to Prince Harry. I mean, not, not that it doesn't have to do with race. His new wife is half black. Didn't bother him. It's fine. As long as she values the right culture. Yes. As long as she's not a damn socialist. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I know you are. All right, let's I'm watch this. It comes first ironically. and foremost, risks an exacerbation of tribalism. It doesn't matter whether it's on the left or the right. Um, with regards to the idea of group rights, well, there's a fundamental, and this is something we've fallen into terribly in Canada, not least because we had to contend with the threat of Quebec separatism, but the, the idea of group rights is extraordinarily problematic because the, 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 the obverse of the coin of individual rights is individual responsibilities, and you can hold an individual responsible, and an individual can be responsible, and so that's partly why individuals have rights, but groups, how do you hold a group responsible? Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole idea is not, it's not a good idea to hold a group responsible. First of all, it flies in the face of the idea of the sort of justice systems that we've laid out in the West that are essentially predicated first on the assumption of individual innocence, but also on the possibility of individual guilt, not group guilt. Right. We saw what happened in the 20th century many, many times when the idea of group guilt was, it was, it was enabled to get a foothold, let's say, in the polity and in the justice system. It was absolutely catastrophic. And so, okay, fine, group rights. Well, what are you going to? How are you going to contend with the alternative to that? The opposite of that. Or that where's the group responsibility? And how are you going to keep? How are you going to hold your groups responsible? Well, we don't have to talk about that because we're too concerned with rectifying hypothetical, re rectifying historical injustices, hypothetical and otherwise. And that's certainly not to say that there weren't any shortage of absolutely catastrophic historical injustices. That's not the point. The point is how you view the situation at the most fundamental level. And group rights are an absolute catastrophe, in my opinion. But let's, uh, Michelle, come in on that point. This is I'm just trying to get to the, the one part. The lady is infuriating. Where he creeps, Stephen. Don't <laughs> respond to that. It's a nice I'm, I'm still Stephen very Fry, lost Stephen Fry's hilarious. I like Stephen Fry. I just want to get to this. Get the flip side. If you have benefited from this 300 guy. years of holding people in servitude, thinking that you did it all on your own. Why can't okay, they... okay, Mo like 99.99% of white people are not descended from slave owners, one. Two, it didn't benefit anyone. Like slavery held back our, our uh, economy. economy. Like after the slaves were free, yeah. like, the, it, like slavery uh, made it so that you couldn't compete in the marketplace and it made it so you didn't invent anything because you had all this free labor. Like what he's saying, nothing he's saying is true. I'm gonna fact check everything he's saying. 
will work harder. Let me see. For 300 years, you ain't had no job. You ain't had no job? Okay. Real quick, he also uses phrases like person of color. So Barack Obama is not descended from slave slaves at all. He's descended from an Ethiopian. No, Kenyan. Or a Kenyan, whatever. He's more likely to be descended from someone who sold slaves than someone who was a slave. So... It's just because of skin pigment. These people are yeah. legitimate racists. Yes. The reality is for 300 years, you hold people in the bands. You hold them in subordination. You refuse to give them rights. Then all of a sudden- You, he, he's now yeah. collectivizing guilt. Yeah. He's saying you as a white person. It's like saying, okay, you as a black person committed what? That last gang rape in New York, uh, you know? Free them and say you're now individuals. Not having the skills, Who not having the, you? the, the you no. let, 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 not having the you? skills, the I'm talking about America, first See, of all. See, this is when Peterson's a man. I shouldn't even criticize him because what he's it it what he, the, the line he's holding is so difficult and he's doing such a good job that I, I don't I don't want to put any more on his plate. And I love him. I'm friends with him. Like you saw that interview yeah. we did. Like we're boys. He's a great dude, but like I really get a little irked. When people uh, uh, say that that Auschwitz is a right wing policy, it's just it's a little infuriating. I'm talking about American society, first of all. I'm talking about the Northern Hemisphere. I'm talking about every society where enslavement has existed. But I'm speaking specifically. Oh, oh, so oh. Nigeria until 2007. Go on, Mom. What were you well, saying? Well, yeah, not all quote slaves were black. No, no, of course not. They ran out of Irish people. <laughs> Irish people were cheaper. And there when, were, they used to let him drown, and they wouldn't even they, they would they would save a black slave before an Irish slave because the Irish slave was cheaper. They ran out of them. The the Arabs had such a good slave trade going that they could get they could get a better deal on the blacks. That's the only reason they switched from the Irish, and they're not extinct. Of the repudiation of individual rights among people of color in America who were denied the opportunity to be individuals. So I see. What about Kanye West or Larry Elder or uh, Thomas Sowell? Aren't they people of color being denied their individual rights because they don't agree with you politically? You fuck. <laughs> Obviously, and ideally, and I think Michelle Goldberg does too, agree with the emphasis on individuals. What we're saying to you is that we have not been permitted to be individuals. We have not been permitted to exercise our individual autonomy and authority. And the refusal to do so, to recognize me as an individual means... He's saying it on stage in front of millions of people. Does he have no concept that he has power? I just want to stop real quick and say, uh, gentlemen, Whisker Bear, right on. He says extreme right is... Get off my land and leave me alone, not rounding people up. Exactly. Extreme right, it can get real extreme where people just have a bunker and a, and a freaking field <laughs> <Yes>. of uh, <laughs> solar yeah. panels. Yeah, you but don't want to get it's not, <laughs> like, Yeah, because you have to connect to a group somehow. Yes, I'm not you saying that you're... Because we're mammals. Right. It's not, it's not like... <laughs> we I, need community. I'm not right wing to the point where my entire world is just Owen. I'm... What? What's wrong? That's Dyson. Yeah. He's awful. Mom, they're all garbage. Oh my gosh! It's uh, it, like because because I'm still I'm Owen, about, Jean's but... son, Owen, Amy's wife, Owen, Walter's what, father, what Owen, that? the husband, Owen, the American, Owen, the human, Owen, the Christian, Owen, the dog owner, Owen, this confused guy, Owen, the comedian. Like we have, we we go back and forth between our individuality and our group identity. Yes, but it, yeah, but but, we but have to, it's yeah. not you're not defined by your group right, ever. Right. It's a dance. It's back and forth. All right. Oh, different Dyson, someone said. Oh, okay. All right, so here we go. <laughs> you roll up on me and I'm a 12-year-old boy in a park and you shoot first in ways you do to black kids that you don't do to white kids. Okay, I, I can't even get through one sentence. Do you know, you're, if, if, you're, you're fi uh, white people are five times more likely to be shot by a black person than a black person by a white person. Oh, I did Google Nationalization Act. We'll talk about that. Uh, watcher, you, you know that I'm not just going to leave you hanging and say that you're... Oh, and Google Nationalization Act of 1790, The Watcher. I'm not just going to leave you hanging. You know that. Like, the fact that you uh, you followed it up, oh. I love. And so we'll talk about it. I, I did Google it. We'll, we're just staying on point real quick. Did you just call me a coward? Oh, okay. I hear you. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, you would have a right to say that if I didn't follow up. But you got to understand there's a lot happening right now. You know I would never just leave you hanging and say, I'm not, I, yeah. I don't hunt and pick, guys. Someone said that yesterday on YouTube. They're like, oh, you hit low-hanging fruit? It's like, no. Oh, I just yes, have a thousand yes, people yes, talking yes. to me at the same time. It's way different. You're great. I love you, man. All right. All well, good, brother. <laughs> and don't. And when you just call me a coward, I'm not offended because you're just talking like a, a passionate person. Mom, how many arguments have we gotten into? <laughs> all right. Here we go. Let's 
me count you are the not ways. treating that person as an individual. If we're living in a society where women are subject to aberrant forms of horrid, uh, patriarchal, sexist, and misogynist mm -hmm. behavior, you are not See, acknowledging the centrality he, of the ahead, individuality. Well, he doesn't want truth. He wants to win. Right. He doesn't even know what he's saying. It gets way, it gets way crazier, Mom. Oh, Watch this. Oh. Women, you are treating them according to a group dynamic. <laughs> and if we, if we get beyond the ability of people on the right to de understand the degree to which they have operated from the basis of benefit from group identity without having said i am by saying this the great american there is no white male group <laughs> identity benefit does he not like what what yes. kind of an asshole they were the first knows. ones to be taken into world war one and two and <laughs> civil war they lined up to free these bastards should have let them stay <laughs> There we go. <laughs> said that it has been said that racism is so American that if you challenge racism, you look like you're challenging America. We are that isn't true. No, right. I just said that. He doesn't want truth. He wants to be right. Right. Challenging inequality. We are challenging the refusal to see me as an individual. When we overcome that, have at it, we're all on equal well, so, 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 no, 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 I think it's good. I think it's good. Right. Right. is getting stirred here. So I've got a couple of questions. So, so let's, let's, your side yeah. spoke, so I'm going to go yeah. to Jordan, then to you, Let's Michelle. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Okay. Okay, so, this is the, what he's about to do is is what makes it so I know the left is wrong and I'm on the right. Cuz like you know mom, I was trying to find middle ground and do yes, debate shows yes, and I was Yes. And and the fact that after the truth. And I am liberal but not a liberal. Yes. It, it like okay, so this moment I've seen uncountable times where someone says, "Tell me what you need from me." And the other person just starts rambling into nonsense because yeah. the left has no limits. It is there is nothing they want. All right, check it out. Let's assume that. That's fine. Yeah, well, assumption. that's what you would say. So, uh, uh, so let's say mm. here. Let's get precise. Mm, I'm black. Mm. This okay? Was that in the very individual of you? <laughs> Let's get precise about this. Mm -hmm. He's okay, not saying as a black man. He's saying that's what you would say you because that's what you do. Well, That's the irony. It, I know, but, but just look at... Every moment has to be looked at because the reason... Uh, like the other day when I was arguing with that dude and Jason was like, just let him talk. I'm like, no. Every sentence that is provably false you let go oh. by that's how a sorcerer starts doing their thing it's like when someone's like well in america racism is the common thought and the patriarch you go w w okay what because if you allow that the next statement the next half truth yeah. will have more yeah. ground and the next yeah. half truth, and before you know it you say white people owe black people money and there's and, and people will believe it because you didn't yeah. stop them yeah. every step of the way and go what like right there when he goes is that very when he says that's something you would say, it's not you people. Listen. The water's getting stirred here. So I've got a couple of questions. So, so let's, let's, your side spoke, so I'm going to go yeah. to Jordan Listen. and then to you, Let's Michelle. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Okay, so let's assume that. That's, that's fine. That's yeah, well, assumption. that's what you would say. So He didn't say you people. Right. It's not you black people. He's, He's saying that's... Dyson. He goes, that's what you would say because that's what you've been saying. Right. And so Dyson wants to be treated as an individual, but what right. Dyson does right now is he's always against truth. So right now, he he inverts back to his group identity to right. avoid facing that I, he does think that. Yes. And he is predictable. That he doesn't want the truth. So no, listen. Say, Here, let's get mm, precise. Mm, was that in the very individual of you? Yeah. So it was know. exactly. He wasn't saying that black people do anything. He said, you, Dyson, will think that. No, and, no. And another thing, when the guy said... Uh, is that you as an individual? He was responding to the mmm. It's insane. Listen. Precise about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get precise. To what degree is my pre present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean 5%? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege? You By the way, this is true. This is called reparations. It's a it's a it's a race tax. Great shit right hearing now. about it. Now, no, he agrees with it. Like Dyson's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So he wants a race tax. Think about that. That that is Nazi Germany. Get precise about one other thing, okay? 
We'll get precise about one other thing. Precise. Now, yeah, precise. Preci yes. Uh. And so. Uh. Yeah, it's a word that means something. You fuck. If if we can agree, and we haven't, that the left can go too far, which it clearly can, uh. then how would my worthy opponents precisely define when the left that they stand for has gone too far? You didn't like equity, equality of outcome. I think that's a great marker. But if you have a better suggestion and, and won't sidestep the question... By the so way, he already I'm wants equality of outcome. That that has to have genocide. Equality of opportunity is one thing. Equality of outcome is not. You will never get 50% of women and men in a field ever because they're different. You can have like equality of opportunity. A woman can be a, a race car driver. But the fact they don't have testosterone raging through their body. But you can't have 50 women and 50 men all racing around the same track. Well, also, and also, oh, it, it's, Benny. it's, it, and also, no, if you, okay. if you okay. force it, if you force it, the only way to get it, I love this, this, uh, this, this, um, this saying, the only way to make a, a, a forest equals with an ax. Yes. You're not raising up women, you're taking down men and, and vice versa. If you're trying to get, men into motherhood you're not you're not raising up men you're lowering women yes and it's the same, same with like with the breastfeeding that's why yeah I yeah to leave La Leche it's, like, and, and, and that's what's and that's what's cr crumbling around identity politics is the trans stuff when it's like uh so now you have to make men as good as women at women stuff which is yes. insane a man will never be as good at mothering there may be a man that's better at mothering than a horrifying woman you're gonna get the bell curve crossover but you're never going to get, on average, men as good at mothering as women. And just like right. you'll never get, on average, women that are tougher than men. That's right. Like, you're not going to get that. You'll have a woman. Like, there's an MMA women that can beat me to death. But that's an extreme example. Like, on average, I can beat women. <laughs> All right, so Jay's out. I can dispense with my white privilege. And so that you can tell me when the left has gone too far, since they clearly can. And that's what this debate is about, about political correctness. It's about the left going too far, and I think it's gone too far in many ways, and I'd like to figure out exactly how and when so the reasonable left could make its ascendance again and we could quit all this nonsense. Okay. 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 Do, you mind, um, do you mind if I answer, um, Stephen? I, I, I will answer you, but I just want to answer Stephen Fry first because you talked about, you know, this is how we got Trump. No, she doesn't, she doesn't matter. Wait till you hear uh, what, what this other guy says. This point about how does he in a sense, get an equal voice in this debate back if it is implied that his participation brings with it this baggage of white privilege that doesn't allow him to see clearly the issues that are before us. But that is to be complicit in the very problem itself, terminologically. You're beginning terminologically. To Let's look up what that means. Terminologically. It's even a word. Oh, the vocabulary is. of technical terms used in particular field subject, science, or art nomenclature. The study of nomenclature. Term, terminologically. The study of nomenclature. Let's look up the exact definition of nomenclature. It, it's, these are nonsense, like Dr. Yes. Seuss words. The body or system of names in a particular field. So it's, it's a vernacular. Right. Yes. So, so it's the study of a vernacular. So, what the, even the way he used it is wrong. He, right. It is. It is. It, it's the field of study of a vernacular, where it's saying like these are the words like an obstetric or let, let's say a tree like a tree guy like Jason like words would be like um, like the nomenclature could be um, a headache that means a tree's coming down or oh. throw ball. Stuff like that. So if you right. study where those words jargon, come from, jargon, it? right? So if you study the origins of a jargon, then that's what yes. that word means. Now let's see what he meant by it. So in that context, what did this like ridiculous hee hawing jackass? Like I want to come to you on those, Greg Michelle, on Jordan's point about how does he, in a sense, get an equal voice in this debate back if it is implied that his participation brings with it this baggage of white privilege that doesn't allow him to see clearly the, moderator's the issues that are before us. But that is to be complicit in the very problem itself terminologically. Oh. You're so you're complicit it, in the problem not. itself terminologically. No, but let's break down what he means. So that means you're agreeing <laughs> to the very problem they're talking about by studying 
the words of a group. So the words of the white male group are the words of logic. Is basically what he's trying to say. Like the words of problem solution. Like the, the words of questioning. Like so terminologically, people like Peterson, who he is defined by his race and his, and his gender. So white males are using terms and nomenclature and jargon like, what do you mean by this? So what he's saying is absolute nonsense. And yes. before I forget, the watcher, I, I don't want to, um, yeah. I did it. I did say the watcher was. Yeah. Yes. So just real quick, the naturalization law of 1790 uh, restricted citizenship to any alien being a free white person who had been given, uh, who had been in the U.S. for two years. In effect, it let out indentured servants, slaves, and most women. Right. But see, this is the thing is. Um, yeah, I, I think that's 1790. That's like a decade after the starting of America. And most, most white people were indentured servants anyway. They're trying to keep out indentured servants, women. Um, they were just pretty much trying to keep it a very, very small group. And you're going you're gonna to hate me for this. I get why people didn't want women to vote. And I'll, I'll tell you real <laughs> quickly why. Because if you can't be drafted... Or if you can't be a part of, of the of the duties of citizenship, like um, like putting out fires and stuff like that, it it it's kind of unfair. Don't get me wrong; I'm glad women vote, and it's all good, especially now that there's no draft. But for example, I don't think people on welfare should be able to vote. Like you, you can't vote to get more money from people. I, I think that if you're on welfare. You kind of don't get to vote on laws to get more free money from people. That's that. That's all I'm saying, Mom. What do you think? Well, you know, I can see your point there, but I'm thinking too. Um, all right, those who are draftable, which meant uh, the men, but Donald Trump has umpteen. What are they called? Deferments. Right, right, right. Uh, no, no. Bill Clinton had umpteen. Mom, this is 1790. I, I, I don't. I totally get what you're saying. So that's why women can after vote after at, oh, I I agreed with that after Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt and I think was it Kennedy no who else was in a war we our politicians don't fight anymore right Obama Kennedy uh, I think was the last Kennedy one. I think was the last one where it's like um, Nixon didn't no and they won't let their kids fight now and Reagan ki- didn't all their kids are now protected mm-hmm. and now uh well George W fought. Oh, y- well, George W. fought. He fought in World War II, uh, Korea, and he, then he became no, in he CIA. Wasn't old enough. Jo- oh, no, George, George H.W. George H.W., yeah, yeah. yes, yes. The Gerald Ford fight? What? Wait a minute. So Jude says Nixon did, Reagan did. They both fought? Reagan, I, Reagan I don't didn't think... fight. No, you got to take it all with a grain of sand. Well, I, look that up. He played <laughs> soldiers, but I. Uh, well, Owen, maybe we're we'll both. T- wrong we'll take a look. That. Reagan. War service. And then we'll get back to Dyson. Military service of Ronald Reagan. Due to eyesight difficulties, he was classified for limited service. Hang on, he might have... I think he did acting for them. Hang on. After completing 14 courses, he enlisted in the Army and uh, Reserve in 37 as a private assigned to troop. Ah, I guess he was... He was appointed second lieutenant, but... In the Office Reserve Corps of the, of the Cavalry. Fight? Was ordered to active service in 42. Due to eyesight difficulties, he was classified for limited service only, which excluded him from serving overseas. overseas. Okay. Yeah, but see, that isn't his fault. Like, right. I, like I, right. I looked That's into right. it. I, I couldn't join um, certain... Like, the, I, I'm not allowed in the Air Force because I'm too tall, for example. Like, your brother got kicked out of the Navy because of his toe. Uh, yeah, his feet that he got injured with in football because when he was in football in high school, they used steel cleats. Yeah. And... And so he's missing some toes. No, he's not. He's missing at least a toe. Uh, he's missing two because he had them taken off about. So he is years missing ago, toes, but not when he was in the Navy. Oh, George W. was in the Air National Guard, but was only in a few yeah. years. Yeah. Right, but then once you start getting into Clinton, there's nothing. Like right. Obama, nothing. Right. You know, and Trump, nothing. It's right. like, and so that's a whole different story. So you have a point where it's like now. That's yeah, why I'm cool with women a- serving because the men have become. Soy boys, <laughs> myself included, a little bit because I didn't serve. But like, I would have if 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 we were if there was like a threat to America, I would have I would have jumped in. But see, that's but back then. But you never got a um, a conscious deferment. You just 
No, I would have went. And there was no draft by the time you Right, that's came why along. women can vote. But I, I honestly think if, if there was a draft and one group of people don't have to go into a draft, it really is a debate whether or not they should right. be allowed to vote. It's like if you don't pay for the pizza, you don't get to determine what toppings Whoever are on Whoever pays it. the piper calls the tune, yes. Oh, we got a couple super chats. This is awesome. Thank you for this. All right, real privilege is having a wonderful mother. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's from Nick. Jordan B. Peterson is not always truthful, especially when it comes to white identitarians. Maybe someday he'll address demographic replacement. That's from Zyklon B. Peterson. That's an intense oh, name. Yes. Owen and OG Mama Bear loving this. Owen's mom should have her own stream. <laughs> I'm trying to get around. That's I never do streams Sunday morning. There's probably like the amount of people that are even awake right now. Yes. Like in LA, it's it's 6:30 a.m. on a Sunday. But I I, I, t- I get her when um when I can. You know I don't she doesn't visit that often. Well, gentleman Wesker Bear lives in uh, OZ but grew up in Oswego and says hi, Mama Bear. Thanks for the soccer oh, lessons I in the who 80s. That was it had to be somebody you were in the soccer camps with. Yeah, that's when I was doing it. That's right. So who's that? A Wesker, uh, gentleman I, Wesker Bear. I know, but we don't know. Who we go is. by code name sometimes. Yes. Uh, Jose, I love this discussion with you and your mom. Please make, please more you and Ma. I love it, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, I told you people. I told you your audience is out there. It's not always at a state university. You guys are fantastic. Thanks, Networking Bear. All right. Let's, oh, no. um, Where were we? What was that? Trend? Well, well, well we're, oh, with well, the Naturalization Act. That, oh, yes. that, that doesn't justify an ethno state, and I don't want to live in an ethno state. Like sometimes people use Israel as an example, and I'm like, why the hell would I want to live in Israel? You know, like why would you want to exclude uh, people outside of an ethnicity? And then people are like, yeah, but look at people's natural ten- tendency to be around people of the same race, which is true. But be- no, but it, it's just. Jews aren't a- that's not a race, is it? I don't know. It depends on how you think about it. Some some yeah. say it is. Some say it's a religion. I think like it's I, because you can convert to Judaism and then be in. So that's why I don't understand. Yeah. They always act like they don't want you to. Yeah. It's like, well, what do I have to do to become a Jew? They're like, eh, don't even do it. It's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of eating restrictions and tents. <laughs> But like when people make it seem like, why wouldn't we be able to do it? Because Japan and Israel does it. It's like, well, why do you want to be like Japan and Israel? Like America is awesome because of its free market and its open society. That being said, I believe in strong borders and merit and but, rule of law and, and culture. And and we're mutts and mutts are much stronger than the purebreds. Right. That's, that's another thing is the concept of white is so new. Like most Americans have some form of Irish in them, and Charles Darwin, literally in *The Descent of Man*, said that the Irish were lower than the blacks, and that they're a race that cannot be saved. Uh, so I just think that that's a, I I understand the alt right more than I understand the left because it's a response to left identitarianism. You know, the the alt right is a response where it's like if you keep saying that you get special treatment because you're black or a woman or gay. Yeah. Well, then I get it too then. I get that more than the original one because it's a response. But that being said, it's still wrong because it's not what I think makes America great, which is free market capitalism, democracy, Judeo-Christian values, the history that we have. Because I think you're always going to uh, run into problems Well, if you who, don't go merit. Who was one of the founding, was it Alexander Hamilton who was part black? One of them was. Who, I can't remember. I don't know. Who knows? Everyone's jumping fences back then. But that's my point. They weren't pure white. I know. I didn't realize how Scandinavian we were until uh, Uncle Ron did all that. Yeah, well, I know. It, no, but that, it, it makes sense, Ma. We're way taller than some of the Irish. Yeah. Oh, that that our like, Irish. Well, and the Irish were ancestry really comes from Scandinavian. There's yeah. no six seven Irish people, and like <laughs> yeah, you're right. And when he took all those tests, and, and that's when I found out I was also part Ashkenazi Jew. <laughs> I think it'd be real funny to uh, to to be like, oh, I took uh, I took uh, ancestor. I went to ancestry.com, and it turns out I'm gay. <laughs> Hang on, alt right is nothing but far right from form of identity politics. Yeah, but it, right is not white. Like this is what's insane, and this is a trick by the left and authoritarians, and people need to seriously see this. The left is not non-whites and the right is whites. And they're both a form of authoritarianism. That is not true. That isn't true. That like That's the way to divide everybody. The right is individualism. It's merit. It's accomplishment. It's free market. It's stay off my land. It's don't tread on me. Like 
That's the right. It's not everything bad about the left except white people. That's insane. Like that literally yeah, makes everything go to yeah. hell. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good, Owen. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's keep watching this this oh, stupid black man. For long. Ugh. No, you got to see the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, because I saw here somebody said Stephen Fry kills it in the ending. I thought he was merely an actor on... No, Stephen Fry is awesome. What was a that? A lot of the old school bones. gay guys, like like Dave, Dave Rubin, Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry's a comedian. I got to show you some old... Uh, uh, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry used to have a show together. Oh, for heaven's sake. They were sake. hilarious. Oh. And the OG gay guys are starting to go... They still What's say they're OG? original gangster. It's like the, oh. the gays that like fought for rights in the 70s are not having the left. Because gay guys that fought for the rights in the... Oh, yes. Yeah, because, yes. because they see the oh, trick. Because Jim, now they're... Our friend Jim. Yeah, like oh. they're, yeah, they're like, these, this LGBT He's, thing yes. is ridiculous. Yes. Oh, it, same with my old book agent. Like even he, even though I got... Um, oh. Even though I ran into some problems with all that. But even those guys, they're like the, the older established gay men. Same with a lot of Jews where they're like... They're not getting any of these victim privileges anymore. They see the wave. The wave is like, okay, you're a marginalized group. You're going to be a Democrat, liberal, vote this way. We'll give you your roller skates yeah, and your flag yeah, to wave. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as it passes past them, they're on to the next and the next and yes, the next. And then yes, they start treating yes, them like white yes, males. And yes. that's... And that's and that's the wave of authoritarianism. And that's why the one 19-year-old uh, Starbucks, John Hopkins, uh, that person, that's why... Oh, shoot. I lost my thought. I had a thought when you were talking about... Um, uh, oh. Oh! It's gone. What we... <laughs> I don't know. You can't go in the chat because that it makes your head do that. Because I just have a real quick one, then we'll go okay. back. Okay. Owen, ask your mama when is the best age to introduce the adventures of Huckleberry Finn to a child's repertoire? Uh, uh, well, middle school. They're not really much. Maybe sixth grade. They're they're not much more interested. Um, before that. Oh, that's one of the dogs, I think. All right, here we go. Well, yeah, but also a lot of the old gays. Uh, a lot of the old gays. Um, didn't make that jump because they got broken like dogs. You know, like Stephen Fry is smart enough to be like, I feel like he calls them the the Gestapo, like the thought police, where that's why I can't even listen to the woman. Don't even get me started on this woman. When he's like, I can't say what I believe without someone thought policing me. He's like, it's like East Germany. And it really is. And she was like, but that's a feeling though. You, what's the proof? And I want to be like, you won't hear the proof because people like me don't get a voice anymore because I've been banned. <laughs> All right, let's watch more of this. I got a point that's, that's already uh, productive and class. controversial. You're saying how can oh, he by get second grade. his equality? Oh, my kids read read it twice by second grade. Oh, well, he's great. That's where I got George the dog. Him. I oh, bear. for heaven's sake. Oh. All right, All right well, I, I gotta, you just yes, got to trust right. me on this. If yes. you go in the chat, we oh, will not okay. accomplish any thoughts. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Fry killed it, summing up the whole. That's from Jose. Thanks for the super chat, by the way, bud. Hey, who are you talking about? Jordan Peterson, trending number one on Twitter. Jordan Peterson. Okay, real quick, look at he's his values are power. He's saying like Jordan Peterson, trending number one. Yeah, because he's better than you. International bestseller. I want him to tweet. Hang on, what did what, 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 what did Peterson say? Yeah, he wants yeah, a tweet. That's, that's already uh, productive and controversial. You're saying, how can he get his equality back? Who are you talking about? Jordan Peterson, trending number one on Twitter. Jordan Peterson, <laughs> with an international, in, anyway. international bestseller. I want him to tweet something out about me and my book. <clears throat> this, I mean, this guy is horrifying. Oh, he is. Uh, he is. No, he's just a racist piece of garbage. It's like, what if I was like, Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan, you mean the guy that owns his own shoes? Michael, yes, he's an individual who's accomplished great things, Tyson, Dyson. Dyson. Peterson, right? This is what I'm saying to you. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well. He's tap dancing. He's the minstrel show. I know. Uh, How yes. funny is it? He's the yes. blackface minstrel yes, show. Yes, he is. He's like, why the rage, bruh? Hey, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's, it's, he's literally the minstrel show. You're a mean, mad white man. And that's it. That's the sleep. line. And well, that's the line that's about to. That's the line that lobs a thousand ships for Peterson. Watch him shake his head, and he never lets it go. Watch this. International bestseller. I want him to tweet something out about me and my book. <clears throat> Jordan Peterson, right? 
This is what I'm saying to you. Why the rage, bruh? You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. And you're going to get us right. And That's racist. Imagine yes. if you called him an uppity black. Or a That's why I say shit like that. I, I like when someone when people say, "Oh, imagine if we did." That. That's why I just do it. I'm like, real quick, <laughs> that nigga stole my bike. Yes. Here it is. That nigga stole my bike. Like, why do I do that? Because. But so, he's allowed to say the mean white man and get by with it. Not with me. Oh, well, yes, no, but so that's what I mean. Is, is, is people keep reestablishing this false reality of yes. like, imagine if we said that. He can say that, but we can't. I, that's, that's when I put my foot down and said, well, not me. Now, is he going to respond, Peter? Oh, yeah. This is okay. just the beginning. Let's hear that. I have never seen so much wine and snowflaking. There's enough wine in here to start a vineyard. He's, he's just tap dancing. Uh, yes, let's hear Peter say. And what I'm saying to you empirically and precisely when you ask the question about white No, privilege. I have to. I can't let it go. Okay. Empirically, that means raw sense data. So yes. what he's about to say is the opposite. The fact that you ask it in the way you did, dismissive, pseudoscientific, non-empirical. Okay, so he said empirically Empirical you're non-empirical. Right. Yes. That's absolute horseshit. Justification, A... The, the truth is that white privilege doesn't act according to uh, quantifiable segments. It's about the degree. Quadrifiable. No, we're looking these up. You can't just get away with this stuff. Quadrifiable se segments. Quadrifiable segments. When was this shown? Yesterday. Oh. That's why. That's not a word. Quadrifiable is not a word. That That's gibberish. That's literally nonsense. The closest word is durifiable. So he said right. quadrifiable. He's literally saying nonsense rhythm. He's doing jazz. Alice in Wonderland. He's just going quadrifiable. I think he probably meant quantifiable. Let's 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 re-listen to this. If he meant quantifiable segments, that still doesn't make any sense. Yeah, somebody's oh I know. Yeah. Bruh, you, you, you don't look up well, quantifiable. But segment. you're a mean, mad white man. And you're gonna get us right. so much wine and snowflaking there's enough wine in here to start a vineyard and what i'm saying to you empirically and precisely when you ask the question about white privilege the fact that you ask it in the way you did dismissive pseudoscientific non-empirical and without justification a he did he asked a question how far can the left go before it's too far that's not pseudoscience that's a direct question you you piece of garbage Truth is that white privilege doesn't act according to uh, quantifiable segments. He, that he said quadrifiable. He did not say quantifiable. Correct. So even quant, quant, quantifiable segments is still not. Segmentation is a demographic I method yeah. used to define segments of your audience by variables such as age, race, and gender. But quantifiable segments doesn't even make sense. It's saying a measurable segment of your audience. That doesn't make any sense about the degree to which we are willing as a society to grapple with the ideals. Okay, so you just jump from a quantifiable segment to the whole society without saying any truth. Nothing he's saying makes any sense. Of freedom, justice, and equality upon which is based. Number two, what's interesting to me, you're talking about not having a collective identity. What do you call a nation? Are you Canadian? Are you Canadian by yourself? Okay, you I'm almost on board white ethno state. <laughs> I'm all like if I keep listening to him I'm this close to just saying whites all right you know I'm joking mom all right oh real quick oh someone just gave me a real nice super chat Adrian here can I be dubbed cinnamon bear dear mom how to deal with the loneliness of intelligence p.s Owen thank you for sharing your thoughts how do you deal with the loneliness of intelligence and and welcome cinnamon uh cinnamon oh. bear Tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. It's not fun. And sometimes even on, on the campus, I'm alone. Unless I'm around Patrick. That's why we you talk so much. That's why we have long phone conversations and put it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and also just get one friend that gets you. You don't need a lot of friends. Right. You're never going to be popular. Because right. you're six months ahead. You're a year That's ahead. Right. Like, look at my career. And I'm not even a genius. I'm like 
the a perfect fool for the genius. Like geniuses think I'm funny because I'm smart enough to be funny for very smart people. I'm, I'm relatively smart, but like my my bits work the best a year after I put them up. Like my shit yeah. starts uh, yeah. go, like yeah. like trending like. That, 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 uh, oh, okay. how to argue another side. When I first put it up, no one even liked it. Well, and now and everyone loves it. And it's too late. When you were out, in, even when you were first out in Los Angeles, you'd, you'd make phone calls saying, these people are psychotic. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, he went through that too. And I, I said, well, you know, look at your choices. You could get come a dog. Home. You could come home. Oh yeah, you could get a dog. And now with Peterson, as he says, you got to suck it up sometimes because I, it's, it's not going to be easy. It just isn't. You're uh, going to just have to be alone. So listen to this. Oh, and uh, Networking Bear said somewhere else, Dyson is the name of a vacuum cleaner. He sucks. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's Well, I good think one. that's what a lot of bears have in common is I think some of them feel isolated for whatever talent yes. they have. Yes, it's a, it's, it's yes. A, it's, oh, Shanique Wotil's here. Um, it's like a, it's a, it's a band of uh, of individualists. All right, here we go. And whoever, Individual? Are, are you part of a group? Are we gonna say mine? Uh, the one, the one above in the red. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what you do. Oh, so so he or she? she Cinnamon she, bear. She is here. Uh, this is where. This is how you're going to deal with your loneliness of intelligence. It might not be anybody in your even your close circle of friends, uh, or even where you work. Why do you think I started the unbearables? It's not for money. Ask my mom. This is what I need because sometimes I feel so lonely and isolated yes. because people are so fucking stupid. Even no offense on my on my on my um, language. Even, she doesn't even, care. Even in Hollywood, you would call because you felt alone in your intelligence, in your comedic intelligence. But you know, Adam Sandler recognized your goodness. Oh yeah, well that's the that's the, the the smart people were, yes. were all about it. All right, here we go. When America formed its union. It oh, did geez. so in opposition to another group. So the reality is What's that the other group? What's the other group, Dyson? Who are part of group identities and politics denied the legitimacy and validity of those groups and the fact that they have been created thusly and then have Thusly. Resentment. Thusly. I'm not gonna keep doing it, but thusly. That that's others. an intellectual All I'm asking for uh a pseudo intellectual term. That's Everything he accres uh, 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 accuses Peterson of, he is pseudoscience. That's what he's yes. doing right now. He probably got like he looks like a tap dancing minstrel show. He really is. He's going. Look over here. Look over here. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, I got. The shell I'm, game. Oh my the god. This is the here we go. Game. The opportunity. Is this, this almost the, over? The, the, the quotation you talk about the difference between a quality of outcome and a quality of opportunity. That's a stayed and retried argument. Hackneyed phrase derived. It's a staged and retried hackney phrase derived from. No, that's that's what a, our country's founded on. From the halcyon days of the debate over affirmative action. Look are you looking class. for outcomes that can be determined equally, or are you looking for opportunity? If you free a person after a whole sense. long time of oppression and say now you are free to survive, if you have no skills, if you have no quantifiable means of existence. Quantifiable. There you said it right that one time, but a measurable, objectively measurable means of existence. Jim Crow, which was a left-wing Democrat government program, screwed over tons and tons and tons of former slaves that had tons and tons and tons of skills. There was more black people in certain um, trades, in certain jobs uh, than whites, and they got kicked out because the white Democrats, the power authoritarians, the ones that he's tap dancing for, uh, made, made government regulations and trade barriers and union barriers that wouldn't allow black people in. People don't know history. The 1890s, the 1900s, there was times when the Democrats, the Woodrow Wilson, uh, Woodrow Wilsons of the world kept, up, kept out the blacks with skills uh, with democratic policies. That's a well, fact. That, that's literally, you can't even debate that. What you have done is liberated them into oppression. Liberated them into oppression. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh do you, I know, but I, I, but, I can't yeah, fast. I know, it, you all right. can't Lyndon let it go Baines by. Johnson, mm -hmm. one of our great presidents, said, if you start a man in a... Oh, by the way... The a hundred years behind, it is awfully difficult to catch up. Another so, Johnson quote is, we'll have these niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. Uh, if you yeah. want to really quote Johnson. Yep. He was I think Jordan Peterson is suffering from anything except an exaggerated sense of entitlement. Exaggerated sense of it. By the way, Johnson's probably our worst president we ever had. 
Well, one of them. Resentment and his own privilege is invisible to him and it's manifest with lethal intensity and ferocity right here on stage. <laughs> but Stephen Fry just laughs. Anybody anybody clapping should should be put in a gulag. Yeah. I'm on board. Let's do gulags. <laughs> What I derive from that series of rebuttals, let's say, is twofold. The first is that saying that the radical left goes too far when they engage in violence is not a sufficient response by any stretch of the imagination because there are sets of ideas in radical leftist thinking that led to the catastrophes of the 20th century. And let me do a note that laws themselves are, are preambles to, to, to violence. So let's say a black a white guy refuses to pay his white tax to this black menstru menstrual show. Someone said menstrual show. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, they're threatened by violence by the state to go into prison if they don't pay for this guy's new suit. Every law is the th is death. Where you say, okay, if you don't pay this tax, yes. we'll put you in prison. Yes. If you don't agree to go to prison. We will come to your house. If you don't agree to come with, with us, we'll kill you. Yes. So that's always a threat of violence. So like when they say uh, when it goes too far, it's a threat of violence. All you're seeing is people resisting unjust laws, which most laws at this point are unjust. That's why I am unapologetically white, uh, right wing. Someone says nigga splaining. That's hysterical. Here we go. <laughs> that was at the level of idea, not at the level of violent action. It's a very straightforward thing to say you're against violence. It's like being against poverty. It's like, you know, gen generically speaking, decent people are against vo uh, poverty and violence. It doesn't address the issue in the least. Um, and with regards to my privilege or lack thereof, I mean, I'm not making the case that I haven't had advantages in my life and disadvantages in my life like most people. You don't know anything about my background or where I came from, and it doesn't matter to you because fundamentally I'm a mean white man. That's a hell of a thing to say in a debate. Like, that was awesome. He just is like, that's, you don't know my background. You don't want to know my background. But Dyson just agreed with what he said. No, no, he's, trust me, he's not. He's oh. about to justify every word. No, Dyson said, yes, that's true. It is, um, uh, it is. Maybe. Right, he's about to back Dyson. it up. Oh, mom, this guy's oh. evil. He's, they're evil people trying to ruin society. Watch. Can't ruin Peterson. I mean, the hit piece is on him. You want. Say. Very, very brief, because I, I want to move on to men and women. Good the, mean, the, mean, the, the mean man white comment was not predicated upon my historical excavation of your past. Oh. My historical excavation of your past. To excavate is to dig yeah. out. Yes. So he's just trying to confuse dumb black people. He literally is. He's trying to use enough words where someone's like, oh, hey, man, he's he got, he knows words right, that I don't know. Right. That's right. I, that's not predicated on me digging up your past. Right. No, he. It's it's a racial slur. He literally just went. He demeaned Peterson into his race, which he never did to this fucking black. Upon the evident vitriol with which you speak and the denial of a sense of equanimity among. No, he's the one who just did it. Like he just did that, and I don't do this for me. I already know this about the left. The left is garbage. The left are liars. The left tell you what they are nonstop. The reason I do this, because thousands of people watch them, and I want young people, I want parents, I want anybody that feels alone to know that we all see the lies in this. And you're not alone. It, 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 this is ridiculous, what he's saying. In an argument. So I'm saying again, you're a mean, mad white man, and the viciousness is see? evident. Okay. Yeah, people are now booing him. Yeah, no, they won the debate. But still, 30% of the audience still agree with Dyson. Started at 39, ended at 30. Okay. Okay. Let's reset. Change the decks here. Let's talk about the... Uh... Okay, the woman is probably the worst because she's not even exciting. Yo. Women. What, what's up? It's almost 10. It's almost 10? It's all right. What? What? Let's just do. We'll do ten more minutes and then she'll roll. It's fine. Oh, I have to be over there by ten. Didn't you say that? No, I thought eleven. She thought eleven. I was just doing the email thing again. It's all right. Don't even. Don't even bother. RJ's out.
had a different experience in history, and I don't want to enter that uh, particular field, but I would say that there is real fear uh, in my business, which is where this all started, show business acting and so on. Um, yeah, people are uh, rather afraid to speak about a piece of, you know, uh, publicity that's come out or a statement that's been made. You just go, yep, yeah, absolutely, and wait for the people to leave the room before you can speak honestly with your friends. Um, and that's, I've never experienced that in my entire 60 years on this planet. This he, he was gay when being gay was illegal and he hasn't experienced the level that we're currently experiencing. This is, what we're experiencing right now in society is so crazy that when people on Facebook and stuff say, oh, Owen, what's up with you spiraling lately? Why are you always talking about that? Any good person has to speak up now. This is like, it's never been like this. This is horrifying. Listen to this dude. He's 60, gay. How was that? Listen. Feeling that, um, and I'm not characterizing feminists as, as in East German, but it's like that <laughs> Stasi are listening. You've got to be careful, they're listening. Uh, and that's a genuine feeling. I'm saying that in my hand of my heart. I'm not saying it to make a point other than the fact that it's true and it's worrying uh, but the sexual misadventures and horror uh, experience is worrying too so they're two worries and they're, they're not solved let's bring uh, jordan in on this because you've uh, written and commented about a lot but Stephen, thank you very much. Yeah. well i think i'm i'm going to point out two things again the first is that my question about when the re when the left goes too far still hasn't been answered and then the second thing i'm going to point out is that you know it's conceivable that I am a mean man, you know, I mean, I, mean we're mean people, me and you, it's okay. <laughs> meaner than some people and not as mean as others. I think that's probably more the case, but I would say the fact that race got dragged into that particular comment is a better exemplar of what the hell I think is wrong with the politically correct left than anything else that could have possibly happened. Um, imagine oh. the hurt, the anxiety, um, the insult that you might genuinely feel, um, according to what I felt was an appropriate comment of description at the moment Listen to this. of its expression. You're love it. But imagine Listen. Listen. now those hurt feelings. And listen to this. Dude, Peterson goes, I'm not hurt. I'm not a victim. I'm appalled. Listen. Okay. You feel great. Listen. You feel great about it. It's really different. I'm not a victim. I'm not hurt. I'm appalled. I'm not a I'm not I'm not hurt. I'm not a victim. I'm appalled. And he's like, there is a difference, sir. I'm not on my heels. I don't feel bad. I'm not whining to mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. I find you disgusting. And that's true. That's what I feel all the time. It's like, oh, you're you're a snowflake. You're being a victim. No, no. I'm I'm in war mode. I look at you and I think about how to dismantle you. I'd kill you if I thought it worked. It doesn't. It's hearts and minds. It's not about uh, war. I don't want to uh, martyr people. But sometimes I look at these these people that are trying to dismantle society. And I go, is 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 killing? Would killing them work? I'm serious. And then I'm like, no, that's bad because that would set. It. That's the same reason that I'm um. I'm uh, against white identitarian pol uh, politics. It would be easier to do that, to just say being white makes you special. Uh, we have to stand together. I could, I could command an army with that. It's wrong. It doesn't work because then you just become whatever your enemy is. But I look at people like Dyson yeah. and I think, do we have to kill them? No. no. Because then you're not American. Then you're not the rule of law. Then you become the mob. Because like what then he's saying... Then you become the left. The exactly. Leftists. Yeah. It's like... That takes away, like, like the Second Amendment, the right to protect yourself is not about going out and killing your enemies. It's about protecting your own property. And you have to let these people call you names and say that because of your race and uh, gender, you can't have an opinion and tell your, your son at school that he's toxic. Yeah. These are like murderous line crosses. Well, and Owen had that happen to him when he was in grade school. He, uh, he had at least one teacher call him toxic. Yeah, that's one reason why I know the feeling. Remember you were saying that that was, uh, that how I am with the left now is how I was with certain teachers back yes, in the day? Yeah. Yes. I don't stand up. I don't, I don't take it at all. And he had more than one teacher <laughs> who d bullied him. 
bullied him and bullied him and bullied him, and he still, they didn't take his soul. Well, one of them killed himself. He did. Yeah. Over pornography. Children pornography. Yes, child pornography. Yeah, they, like, and we're not going to uh, go into other details about what my childhood was like and who I've had to deal with, but the left has got nothing on my skill set. Like, I've, I've battled some Darth Vader's. You have, yes. But I just thought, you know, context is important. You know, you do uh, you do go on a bit, and it's not... <laughs> Coming from you? <laughs> it's not like Dyson that you go on. You go on, you have had this happen. Well, it, when I go on rants, every sentence I'm saying is, is true to me. Like, I'm like, this yes. is my truth. Yes. That guy is saying absolute nonsense to shell game the truth. Yes. He's saying... Well, because yes. of the Glassonian pianimity, yeah. <laughs> the, the man has had feelings of the quadrifiable perceptions of the disingenuous pituitarian past. And my man over here is going to say that he perplexes the quantifiable inst institutional <laughs> pornographic patriotismy. <laughs> and I will stand here today as Dyson, named, not named after my vacuumentation. <laughs> but named after my emancipation and my constipation and my ability to be free in front of this mean old white man. It's rhythm. And at that yep, point, yep, the crowd yep, claps yep, because yes. you're literally doing, yep. it's like comedy. There's the joke. That's what he's doing too. It's, he's going, and my fellow men, nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. I came here with nonsense and it is me. And now you people Clap. And then they go like this, and then everyone yeah. is thinking, this is nonsense, but everyone believes it, and I don't have any self-esteem, and I'm an idiot. Like, I haven't worked at all in my life, so now I'll just agree because other people agree, and I'm scared I'm a zebra. It's so <laughs> stupid. And I can see it. It's a, I have a dream today. I have a dream that black men and white women will have sex in my apartment. I have a dream, I tell you today. All right, so, real, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here. What's interesting is that whatever uh, non-traditional feelings of empathy you endure at this particular point... Not, not, I mean, that was actually kind of funny. Non-traditional feelings of empathy you endure. That, that was the one time that he was kind of funny, but it was still evil. Um, the, the, the point is, imagine then the horrors that so many other others have had to put up with for so, so long. So many other others. What he's saying is, is people that you see as other. By the way, the, the whole concept of people of color is so demeaning to black people, it's laughable. It's saying you're the same as an Eskimo and a Cambodian. You're not white because whites are special. Jesus, get this guy a white hood. When they are refused to acknowledge their humanity. Now, I take your point seriously. So you're a group let, of let, me, let me finish. Let me finish, though. Let me finish. Let me finish, sir. You're not my inquisitioner, okay? You're not oh, my inquisitioner. Oh. Lord, save us. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. You have to think they know not what they do. To me, it's not him. He does know what he's doing. Yes. It's the, anyone who supports the left knows not what they do or else they're, they're to me, they're evil. They're, vamp they're vampires. Where it's like, what he's saying is you white man cannot speak to me. And I'm going to make you feel like you're the in inquisitor, not me. Yes, I know. This bow tie yes. dancing <laughs> moron. You is that when you said you were upset that I added the element of race there, right? When I said mean, mad, white man. Well, what's interesting is that you may have felt that you were being ascribed the group identity to which you do not subscribe. Basically, what he's saying is, um, well, I, like, he, Peterson as an individual has not done this to him. He's saying that because white people at some point in history have done that to people, I get to do that to you. That's literally like raping someone and being like, someone else has raped someone before. So now you know what it feels like. I'm actually here to uh, instruct you. Ugh. Felt that you were being unfairly uh, judged according to your particular race. You may have felt that your individual identity was being besmirched by my rather careless characterization of you. All of which qualifies for uh, a legitimate uh, you know, response to me but also the point we've been trying to make about the refusal to see our individual existence as women, as people. He just put Peterson in a category of race, and now he's going to take the right wing side and say, we have to see people as individuals. Oh, you mean like a market economy? You mean free markets? You mean free speech? You mean right to bear arms? You mean right to associate with whoever you want to? 
illegal search and seizure by uh, the government. You know, all the stuff that that, you know, some Republicans have also screwed over. That's why I don't call myself a Republic a Republican these days, because a lot of them are, are were sucking Obama's. You know what? Oh, here we go. Color is First Nation people and the like. My point simply has been the reason I talked about race and that particular characterization, because there's a particular way in which I have come to a city. I don't know if there are a lot of black people out here. I'm not sure. What about individuals, Dyson? He's like, are there black people here? Are you, you're reading the you're reading the comments. I am because he. I just. I, you know, I don't like to fill my head with stuff that maybe would take up space that real good stuff could be. Right. All right. With. So let's get to the end here. Let's see the fun, the closing thought. The woman was the worst. I'm not even gonna have you listen to him, her because you'll get so angry. Well, some on there didn't mind her too much. Well, they're idiots. <laughs> I'm serious. Anybody? You are an, ad, an odd hominem person. No, idiot is an IQ to, uh, thing. I, I, like, if you have an IQ of 0 to 25, you're technically an idiot. But your bears aren't. Some aren't bears. And some are, you know, if they think the woman made good oh. points, I'll go. It, she's worse than Dyson. If you want me to go through the woman's points, I, I will, but I don't you think you want to. Points. I it's will be it's out of here. Because at least Dyson is convincing people. The woman was literally like, well, because she was she was likable enough to, to, to be even more evil. Because Dyson is like, and the proprietor of the papacity. She was literally like, I'm against violence and uh, getting rid of free speech. And people are like, yeah. And she's like, and I'm for, and then listed all the things that take away free speech and cause violence. And, 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 oh. people, and it's a much easier tr uh, trick. Hang on, what does this say? She was very mild, didn't contribute much to the debate. Ah, uh, she did. If you want me to... Um, <laughs> The woman was way out of her league in this debate. I, I think she was more dangerous than the than Dyson. All she did is agree with Peterson's points, then says one should argument. No, she didn't agree with Peterson's points at all. Oh, Shaniqua O'Toole says hi. I just want Owen's mom to see me. Oh, hi. Uh, uh, Sh Shakina? Sh Shaniqua O'Toole. Shaniqua O'Toole. Hi. <laughs> um, no, she was a snake. She was 100% a snake. Man, I would love to to break her down, but like when she said to to, to Stephen Fry, um, it's a feeling though that really isn't happening to people. Like that's way worse. That's like the the, the denying the self. It, it's it's the girl in '84. It's it's not the harsh um, minute of anger or Snakes whatever. Snakes on a stage. It, yeah, it's not it's not the. Uh, I'm telling you, we won't be able to finish ideas if you get in there. <laughs> Um, I, I'm trying to distract myself from that man. I don't want his voice in my head because I don't have enough space in my head for his voice. I want other. I want voices of Peterson and Fry in my head, not his. All right, here we go. In order to make breakfast, let's just, we have let's just listen to Peterson's final. Our asses to make breakfast. Let's start sharing them asses with everybody else. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, he's also making black people sound like ignorant retards. He's like. A pig and a chicken both want want breakfast. Let's start sharing the masses. Thank you. I am giving a voice to smart black. If I was, if I didn't know actual black people, it's so easy to think that they're idiots. If right. you watch guys right. like this, you're like, right. wait a minute, that's black people. He's putting the blacks down. Oh my god! Yes. And then you watch Larry Elder and Thomas Sowell, and you're like, yeah. oh, they're they're there's yeah. no they're real. See, and I'd rather. Do that than him. All right, here we go. So, I'm not here to claim that there's no such thing as oppression, unfairness, brutality, discrimination, unfair use of power, all of those. Anyone with any sense knows that hierarchical structures tilt towards tyranny and that we have to be constantly wakeful to ensure that all they are isn't power and tyranny. It's interesting to hear Foucault referred to. It's unfortunate, but it's interesting. You know, because Foucault By the way, it was Black Dyson that said, um, see, that's what, that's when I'm not like Peterson. I'll just start like uh, condescendingly joking back at the person what they do. Like, I'll be like, oh, it was dumb Black Dyson, who said this, 
See, he does the high row, but that's because he's an academic. I'm not an academic. I'm a clown. I'm a comedian. I'm an artist. I'm an outlier. I'm a pirate. I have, you're obsessed with the chat. I can see your mind just always well, going just there. Well, just because I, he, he was so awful, and I don't want my head to be taken up with all that. But, I, I but, know but that I'm talking, though. I'm a good person. <laughs> I thought this was about us. It is about us, but I want, <laughs> I want the people to see your breakdown of stuff. I like your passion. Everyone loves your passion. Here we go. Like his French intellectual confreres, essentially believed that the only basis upon which hierarchies were established is power. And that's part of this pernicious politically correct doctrine that I've been speaking about. When a hierarchy becomes corrupt, then the only way to ascend it is to exercise power. That's essentially the definition of a tyranny. But that doesn't mean that the imperfect hierarchies that we have constructed in our relatively free countries, which at least tilt somewhat towards competence and ability, as evidenced by the staggering achievements of civilization that we've managed to produce, it doesn't mean that the appropriate way of diagnosing them is to assume without reservation unidimensionally that they're all about power and as a consequence everyone who occupies any position within them is a tyrant or a tyrant in the making. And that is certainly the fundamental claim of someone like Foucault. And it's part and parcel of this. Oh, another reason I keep stopping is if I go more than 30 seconds, they'll, they'll pull the clip if it's uh, oh, copyrighted. Okay. What he's saying is so true. And want to know a group that always hurts are the Jews. If you think that everybody in a position of power is there because of oppression, you start killing groups that are naturally drawn to positions of power because of their average IQ is higher. The whites are third place. Here we go. What would you call it? This ideological catastrophe that's political correctness. I'm not here to argue against progress. I'm not here to argue against equality of opportunity. Anyone with any sense understands that even if you're selfish, you're best served by allowing yourself access to the multiplicitous talents of everyone and to discriminate against them for arbitrary reasons unrelated to their competences. It's abhorrent. That has nothing to do with the issue at hand. It's, it, it isn't that good things haven't happened in the past and should continue to happen. That's not the point. The point is the point my compatriot Fry made, which is... Well, we can agree on the catastrophe and we can agree on the historic inequity, but there's no way I'm going to agree that political correctness is the way to address any of that. And there's plenty of evidence to the contrary, some of which I would say was displayed quite clearly tonight. Yeah, but Dyson doesn't care. I know, he, I know. He, all right, let's just listen to Fry and then we'll call it a day. This woman's an idiot. Hang on, we can listen to a little of her. I think are going to shut down in response because people are really scared. No, they're not. People just, okay. She sounds like a nanny. Okay, where's, uh, I can't listen to Dyson. I feel like you're getting angry. All right, let's listen to Stephen Fry and then we'll call it a day and you'll go over to, to Jason's place. Stephen Fry's great. Name ourselves with our closing statements. I'm going to put three minutes Someone on the said, clock. said, didn't white people stop slavery? Yeah, we're the first people in the history of the world to, st to legally stop, stop slavery. All right. We're going to go in the reverse order of the opening. So, uh, Stephen, you're up first. Oh, lordy, lordy. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, another thing you missed that Dyson did was because uh, Fry's gay. And he was like, oh, uh, oh, I don't want to get you excited. Dyson said that. And Fry was like. Don't don't uh, don't compliment yourself or whatever, because he's basically saying like just because I'm gay doesn't mean I want to have sex with you. You disgusting fat black moron. There we are. Uh, hide behind the lectern in that case. Well, I've been uh, fascinated by this conversation. There's been an enormous clash of cultures in in the conversation we've had. You know, classic if I can call it huckstering snake oil um, pulpit talk, um, <laughs> which is um, snake oil a pulpit talk. It's a mode of discourse, it's a rhetorical style that I find endlessly refreshing and vivifying. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure that we actually focused on, on, on the, the, the point in question. And my objection has always been towards orthodoxies. I'm a, I'm a heterodox and a, and a contrarian and I can't help myself. And it's I think there's been an underestimation of the fact that language does affect people. It does make 
the young in particular, as they're starting out on their educational or their work careers, it makes them, it makes them very anxious, it makes them very angry, very upset, very alienated uh, to feel that they don't know anymore how to operate in the world, how to engage in relationships, how to think honestly. So they, they accrete more and more to their own mini groups. Um, and, and I think that's dangerous and unhappy for society. I think it's reflected in, in a paucity of cinema and literature and art and the culture generally, is that there's a fear that's pervading it. And while people can talk to academia and say, you should come see our lessons, our lectures are open and free and ideas are exchanged, I'm sure that's true. I'm sure it's true, but I don't think we should underestimate how much this feeling is prevalent in the culture of <laughs> this strange paradox that the liberals are illiberal in their demand for liberality. They are exclusive in their demand for inclusivity. They are homogenous in their demand for heterogeneity. They this is exactly oh, perfect. It is. Like this guy is the man. Yes. He's, he's showing that in, in doublespeak, in op opposite world, everything they say they want, they're doing the opposite, opposite the yes. exact opposite. And that's what you've been saying. And when people are saying, oh, oh, and you're a conservative now, I thought you were liberal. I am liberal, which means I'm a conservative. Because what has changed and what is becoming is now not liberal. The conservatives maintained liberalism, ironically. And these Jews, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't stop doing that joke. Are somehow undiverse in their call for diversity. Oh, I have to, to say the joke someone just said. Patrick said, I love how Stephen Fry is dressed like a plantation owner. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Diverse, but not diverse in your opinions and in your language and in your behavior. And that's a terrible pity. Um, so, I, I, I would say that I'm, I'm sorry that it got a bit heated uh, uh, in, in places because I was hoping it wouldn't. I was hoping it would be a shining example of how people of all different kinds of political outlooks can uh, speak with humor and wit. And no, dude, people have to seriously know the left is done. Like, like you can't ever come together and make it work. What's up, love? Can I just check uh, touching base? It was 10 in the afternoon. So she has to go over there? All right, I guess you got to go over there. I'll okay. say bye to the people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my mom has to go over someplace. Okay, um, bye. <laughs> is it, let's see if there's any just final questions anyone has. Okay. Please write a book of your life. Thank, I did. Well, yeah, we can do, just, you got to trust, you got to trust me on this one, Ma. You don't get any kickback from it. Like just, we got to do a new book. I'm starting a publishing company. Thanks for this. Please keep it up. You both are right and great together. Brilliant, Owen. Can I humbly ask to be Robbie Bear? Welcome, Robbie Bear. Button oh, flies in. Yeah. Gentleman Whisker Bear, his name is Joey Mullen. He sent a super chat. I remember Joey Mullen. I like Joey Mullen. I will be called Demanding Bear from <laughs> Pinochet. He is beyond reprehensible. I agree. Your mom reminds me of my grandmother, who is also a teacher. She always said, think for yourself and just be kind. Be different if it's right. Great way to end. Isn't that great advice? Yes, did Dyson get right. you? Did Dyson put you in a bad mood? Um. Well, no. All right, good. <laughs> well, it's been an honor, Ma, and hopefully we can get another one before you leave tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm on a bender. Yeah. I'm on. I, I know. I know when things are valuable, and I know when there's scarcity, <laughs> and there's scarcity with my mom, and I have to yeah. get her on this as much as possible. <laughs> much love, everybody, and. Uh, be sure to, uh, oh, and thanks for everyone who subscribed to Huge Pianist because a lot of those uh, PayPals are coming in today and yesterday, and it was it was really awesome to see that. So thank you. And I'll, I, I, I have to stay updated on the bare phone, but I've been, don't I work hard, Ma? Tell the people I work hard. You do. You All work right. very hard. See? Yes. She doesn't lie. She's the original <laughs> bear. Well, her dad, actually. All right, much love.